Rock went to prison. He took all the people he helped and he, all the people he fucked with on business that hard and let him down. Like, uh, say like, uh, Interscope people, Tom Wally, who's over the state, a certain artist. He didn't, he wanted to talk about the letter with, uh, <coughs> that Madonna. I was so pissed because he was talking, Madonna never came to see me. She never put out one dollar on his books. When he, when he reached out for me to come see him, he didn't have money for, not, he was not alone, commissary, he didn't have hygiene. You know what I mean? He didn't have shit. And all these people. This call is being recorded. My lover, Madonna, nope, didn't get him put nothing on the books. Uh, Jasmine Guy didn't put nothing on the books. And so he was saying, man, uh, I'm not going to rap no more, I'm going to live out the bitches. I said, well, tell me one of these bitches who's making sure you eat. He said, you're right, none of them. Only person which I think we really should interview her and put her on there because most people don't know her is a woman named Keisha. She was Pac's wife. She married Pac when he was in prison. Keisha Morris? He called my office. They were his wife, right? From New York. Yeah. Yeah. She called my office. And when she called my office, everybody kept laughing and just took the message and wouldn't give it to me. So I said, what y'all laughing about? They said, there's this girl named Keisha. She said she took Pac's wife and, you know, they got married and he really needs your help. And they said, you know, some crazy head. I said, well, look. Let me talk to her because it might be a chance she's telling the truth, right? So I get on the phone with her and she said, Sip, I'm so glad you took my call. She said, everybody think I'm crazy. I said, I know they was telling me don't talk to you. She said, but we're really married. I can, I can show you the marriage certificate. I can show you this. I can show you that. I said, you don't got to do all that. Just tell me what you need. I thought she might need some bread or something. I would just give it to her. She said, look, Tupac said the only person can help him is you. Please come see him so you can get him out of prison. So I said, look, I got an anchor person on as we speak. I'll call my lawyer and get permission for us to go out to New York and then go see him. I went to see Pac. I was, I was in suited up, but I was a paralegal. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how I got in with the lawyer. And I mean, the first time we went there, we had to, we flew the private plane from L.A. to New York. Then we had to fly a smaller plane from New York to the area we had to go to the visit and got a prison. So we had to take a jet because the big plane couldn't, you know, wouldn't be too big. Then we had to take a hour and some limousine ride from the, from the jet. And I remember the first time I got there to go see him, Park came out, he had taxes in the head, you know, you could tell he was stressing. So he sat down and talked to me, he was real happy, he was like, look, Blood like the dead, I'm not gonna rap no more, blah, 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 blah. people looking, so I like to slam my hands on the thing, say, hey look, that's how we came up with the thing, all eyes on me. I say, all eyes on you right now, all people visiting you, and you, you just ran the box, you're not gonna rap no more. I said, get that bullshit out your head. I said, don't, look, don't do no more interviews with, with the vibe saying, this person did this, this person did that. Fuck all that bullshit. He said, well, I see you on my post. I said, I don't want your post. He said, my mother is, you know, she don't have a place to stay. I said, look, first thing I'm going to do is work hard on getting you out. Second thing I'm going to do, when I leave you out of here, I'm going to call, get in contact with your mother, and I'm going to buy a house. If you don't get a post, I'm going to buy her a house. Like, buy her a house cash. She said, oh, shit. I said, then we're going to work on getting you out. I looked at the lawyer. I said, hey. I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to pay everything I can. I asked the lawyer, could he get him out? He said, yeah. He said, anything, no, he said, anything to you. I said, well, is it a slam dunk or a layup? Because every time we talk about cases, I, I talk about like basketball terms. I said, is it a slam dunk? No. I said, it's a layup. No. He said, it's a jump shot. I said, well, check this out. When you shoot that jump shot from that range, how many times do you make it? He said, usually I never miss from that range, so most of the time I'm over here. I looked at Pac, I said, well, that means I'm going to get you on. And we went back to work, we got all that shit done, time I got out, I mean, time I left there, flew back to L.A., I bought his mother, I bought his mother a house in uh, Atlanta, paid cash for it. Got shit off, sent on his books, got him straight, kept talking to Keisha, she was going to visit him, we went back out there, and the day he was back out there, all his people, his mother was trying to come to visit him, some of my friends, and there's 
Oh, okay, nobody comes in. This call is being recorded. You got to be sure that it's attorney because they don't want to get him out. And he came back out, he was smiling, you know. He was walking around George Jefferson. I was crying like he walked around here after that walk. He was just, you know, swinging his shoulders and shit. So we didn't have to us back. We sat down and said, hey, I know you had juice in the West Coast. I didn't know you had juice on the East Coast. Everybody told me, man, you was talking to Big Sugar, man. We know me from my own boys. He said, man, they gave me weed. They gave me food. They gave me cosmetics. Gave me a knife. And they gave me some ice. He said, I got so much weed, I'm high right now. <laughs> we just started laughing, right? I said, all right. Well, shit, I'm coming to tell you. Nine out of ten, I'll be sending you in the free world. I'm stopping to get you working on tracks right now. And then we start talking. I said, what kind of cars you like? He said, oh, I like this, I like this. Or every car he said he liked, I, I already had bought for him. And then when he, you know, when I sent the private plan to pick him up, I sent him a briefcase to pull the motherfucker money. And so when the limo brought him to me at the studio, the first thing we did was my audition as a rider. The hook was already on there. So he, you know, he's smoking, drinking Chris Bow, eating. So he go in the booth and he started rapping. And this was some incredible shit the way he was rapping. He said, you know, what you think? I was like, shit, it's all right. But that shit was bomb. But I said, it's all right because my pops just tell me that football made me work harder. So he started rapping again. I tell the engineer, whatever you do, don't erase it. Just save it and go to another verse. You know, another tape on the race, none of the verses. And he said, yeah, what you think? I said, a little better, but it's all right. But, you know, the truth be told, we was losing our mind how, how he was just scrapping and throwing. This motherfucker take his shirt off. He drinking. He stick up headphones in his ear. He go, hey, fuck this blunt. Somebody bring me a Newport. They bring me a Newport. He said, all right, he told me. This call is being recorded. He did, he did the Newport, took two long drags, and that motherfucker started doing, he, he was better than the first three or four takes he did. I said, this motherfucker's incredible. So we finished that song and a whole bunch of more shit. So after we, at this time to leave, you know, he's smoking, he's drinking, his system, he been in jail, in prison, so, you know, I ain't used to all that. He was talking to me how much fun he had and how much he appreciated me. And he just passed out and I caught him before he fell. And I started laughing. I said, man, you can't fall and hurt yourself. You have to get him push you down or something. He woke up and said, man, I ain't got too high. I drunk too much. So I put him in a limo. I got him the biggest suite at the Palestina. And I had seven of the baddest bitches in California. And I tell those bitches, don't try to steal none of his money. Don't try to steal none of his jewelry. Get him baths, massage him, whatever he wants. You got to do everything for him. All y'all bitches get naked when you get there and take care of him all night till the morning. And that motherfucker called me in the morning and said, Hey, I thought I was dreaming. And he said, They already got me a blunt rolled up. That one already got me a trick made. He said, Man, you gave me the most beautiful naked bitches of being in bed with me and I ain't never felt so good in my life. And we started laughing. I said, Well, shit. Don't, don't, don't try, don't try yourself out too much. You know, we back in the studio. He said, I can't wait. And that's how we started, you know? But Keisha, if it weren't for her, it never would have happened. And nobody never gave her a due, you know? Sacred shit, me and this nigga. Uh -huh. Me and this nigga, shit. He was, every day I did my album, he was there every day. Uh -huh. Every night we stayed up, we tossed it up together. We went out, we went to Mexico together, went to Hawaii together, we went everywhere. You know what I mean? And thought about it. 